I recently just picked up the Apple Mac Mini with the M1 chip. I bought it so that you guys don't have to. I wanted to go through and test this new computer out to see how well it performed doing streaming operations. How well does the Mac Mini perform when you connect capture cards like the HD60S and the HD60S Plus to them? What about OBS, Streamlabs OBS? How about recording internal desktop audio, which is a thing that I don't know why Apple has just not incorporated into their operating system. You still have to download these different applications in order to get it to work, kind of annoying. Maybe one day they'll just make it like Windows at the system level. These were the questions I was asking myself before I even picked up this computer. The chips in the older Mac laptops and computers were Intel based. This is a whole nother ballpark. This is something that's gonna take a couple years to even transition to, but I'm wondering how it's doing at the start of it all. The first thing I tested out on this computer was how well it performed with one of the newest capture cards from Elgato, the Elgato HD60S Plus. I was able to download and install the Elgato Game Capture software. It worked one time, and then after that, it just wouldn't ever reopen. It just didn't work anymore. Boom, done. No matter how many times I tried to reopen this app, even restarted computer, uninstall, reinstall, all that stuff. Guys, no, it just, it wasn't working. Now with the capture card itself, I was actually to get a picture, get audio to come through using OBS. I just did a regular video capture input device, was able to select the HD60S Plus, and this bad boy was able to work no problem. Now how about the HD60S capture card? Those of you guys that have been around my channel for a while or have been watching a lot of my Mac OBS setup videos, you know that this thing is a little bit tricky to deal with, especially if you wanna get it in OBS. We already know that I'm not gonna be able to get a picture on the M1 Mac in the Elgato software. It just wouldn't reopen the application, so that's a done deal, so how about OBS? Well, I installed OBS Link, and I tried installing the NDI source. That didn't work. The NDI source never even showed up, so I ended up going to NDI's website and downloading their tools for Mac, and I was finally able to get the NDI option to show in OBS, but then when I went to actually get a picture from OBS Link to connect to the NDI source, it just didn't work. There was no picture at all. It doesn't work how it does on the Intel base Max. So this thing was a done deal, man. It just, HD60S did not work. I, I tried a lot of different things for a long period of time. Nothing would work. So if you already happen to own an M1 Mac and you want to record gameplay, I would definitely go with the HD60S Plus capture card. The next thing I tested on this M1 Mac were the Streamlabs OBS and the OBS features. Now with Streamlabs OBS, I couldn't for some reason crack over like 24 or 25 FPS. And then when I actually tried recording gameplay off of the HD60S Plus, the FPS would even get lower. It didn't even detect frames drop. It was just frames that couldn't even be reached. I had it set to 30 and I was getting maybe 15 to 25. I tested having my encoding speed up to ultra fast, which means it takes a lot less processing power off of the CPU and I still could not get up to 30 frames per second. And <laughs> like, what, what? <laughs> I did speak with someone else who ran an M1 setup with Streamlabs and they said they also experienced a low FPS issue, but that somehow it miraculously went away some random day. So maybe some of you guys with an M1 chip will experience low FPS, some of you may not. It's just a weird thing. I think it has more to do with the M1 chip optimization with Streamlabs OBS. So it's just, I don't know, it's not great right now. <laughs> when using regular OBS, things seem to be a little bit more stable. It didn't detect frame drops. It, it seemed to hold 30 FPS until I actually tried to do a recording. Uh, yeah, you can see in the example here, it's not ideal. Some parts are smooth, some parts not so much, especially when you get more action. If you wanna remove the choppiness, of course you can increase the encoding speed, like I said earlier, so that it takes less stress off of the CPU. But still, it's, it's a little blurry, it's still a little choppy, it doesn't look optimal. It's not the quality you would ideally want. If you're a subscribed member on this channel, you probably saw that I did a stream test using this Mac Mini. And based on the quality of that stream, it wasn't too bad. It was fine, it wasn't 
choppy, really, you know, at a 3000 to 3500 bit rate set. So I think you could look at that and say, hey, you know what, that's not too bad. It's all right when it comes to streaming. And I could agree with that. You can only do one thing or the other, record or stream. Don't dare try to do them together. The CPU is going to overload and it won't be able to record good footage at all. If your stream settings are right, here's an example on screen. These are what I went with to stream to YouTube and the quality was pretty decent. And you can see here when I wasn't in the middle of heavy gameplay, OBS had a CPU usage of close to 200. Now when I got into some heavy gameplay usage, we were pushing 400 plus. And when your CPU is that high, there's no way you're going to have crystal clear, smooth gameplay. 60 FPS recording, no way, forget about it. I'm looking at the Mac models here. You can see I have the Mac mini up, the MacBook Air for the, with the M1 and also the MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. And if you scroll down, little bit more you can see that the cpus are the, are the same eight core apple m1 chip if you go down the compute you see that the specs are the same the chips are the same and you'd think with an eight core cpu with eight core gpus as well within that chip that it would perform better but that's not the case it comes down to optimization with these apps so more of the story here can you get away with recording or streaming gameplay from your mac with using the m1 chip Yes, you can. Will it be top-notch quality? No, because you need a dedicated graphics card, which is why I'm very, very excited to see what they do with the MacBook Pro 16-inch M1 chips, because you'll have the M1 chip, but you'll also have a dedicated graphics card, and the graphics card will save your life when it comes to anything graphical, gaming, streaming related. To put it in perspective, this MacBook Pro has a dedicated graphics card, and I'm able to push an 80,000 bit rate when it comes to recording. That's right, 80,000. And I don't need to set an encoding speed because the graphics card does all that work for me. It, it makes the quality as best as it can automatically. So that takes the load off of your CPU and you'll have a much better running stream or recording. Though I found it weird with the Mac Mini that the fans never kicked on while streaming. It was silent as a mouse. And I didn't experience any crashes either or like crazy performance issues while just using the computer in general. So that was pretty cool. How about recording internal desktop audio? That's actually possible to do. I'll go into a separate video outlining in detail what you have to do, but just as a general overview, all you need to do is download the application called I Show You Instant. It's specifically for the M1 Mac. Go ahead and sign up for the free trial, download this application, and once it's installed, then you wanna find the drivers. These are the SWB drivers so that you can record that internal desktop audio. After installing these drivers, I was able to select the SWB option to record desktop audio anytime that I need it. But that's going to do it for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you hit the video with a big thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with the notifications on. I know I went kind of in on the M1 Mac. I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just wanted to be honest because I don't want you guys to pick up one of these devices and then just have issues out the wazoo thinking that you're going to get something amazing and you're confused as to why it's not working because this chip is supposed to be so powerful and it's I'm like, what's wrong with my footage? It's not that great. Come on, help me. I, I just want you guys to be well informed. So if anything, I always recommend getting a laptop, especially if it's going to be a Mac with dedicated graphics, get something that is separate in and of itself. So you can use the hardware encoding feature within OBS so you can get the best quality gameplay footage that that would be something on a MacBook Pro 16 inch. If you guys are really itching to get an M1 Mac to stream, just wait it out just a little bit longer. Wait for at least the MacBook Pro 16 inches or the IMAX to come out where you can get a dedicated graphics card plus the M1 chip. So that way you can do all your streaming operations on that graphics card and it, it'll, it'll just make your life so much better. Trust me, so just wait it out, save your money and it'll be far worth it in the future. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you in my next video. Peace out.